Well, I've been working inside the shop here lately and I've made a little bit of progress on the new power log dog. That's essentially the components right there. So I'm going to go over this as I put it together, but it's really pretty simple. This is an, really a design that was used by Temper King on the old B20s. Of course, they used hydraulic motors rather than winch, winches. But that'd be the big difference right there. So this is going to be a little bit heavier than theirs, and it's going to take up a little bit more room, but uh, should still function adequately. Let me get this thing put together. So I was actually looking for a little bit smaller winches to put on here. This was 3,500 pound made by Zeke. These were, the, these were the only ones that I found that had a carbon steel spool on them so that I could put the sprockets on here and, and weld the sprockets to the spools. Most of the small winches that you find nowadays will have a cast spool on there. So this will say to take a cast aluminum spool or some type of pot metal and weld a carbon steel uh, sprocket onto it would not be the best of matches. So I've got a one inch by a two inch uh, bar. Probably could have went with three quarter by two or three quarter by inch and a half. If I think if I did this again, I probably would uh, save a little bit of this weight that's on here. Uh, this is a front plate. Got a front winch mount. This essentially would be the winch that goes on there. Of course, I had to alter one of the bars so that the chain would miss it, but uh, that's what'll be going on. All right, so we got a little bit of a carrier assembly here with the two sprockets on it that'll change the direction of the chain off the winch and it'll essentially pull the bar up and down. They're riding on shoulder bolts, uh, half inch by two inches, 3H16, Tap. All right, this is what I call the front plate. It is a piece of quarter inch plate, seven and a quarter inches high by nine and a half inches wide. That right there will be your winch plate. You mount your winch on. You got one inch by one inch bar on either side of your log dog. And of course the three eighths plate on top of the log dog. These stops right here are where the chain chain's going to bolt to. Alright, let me show you what I did here. Essentially, you have a top bracket that goes across the two shoulder bolts to give them some support since there will be stress on them going up and down along that log dog. The bearings you see there really aren't acting as bearings, they're just taking up space. I, I just used what I had to use as bushings in between the spur gears so that they are supported and are not going to be sitting there wiggling around too much so they're going to work adequately so you could actually just make you some bushings out of some round stock drill a hole in it cut it the right length and put it on either side of that uh, sprocket and that would work just as well this is the back plate this bottom plate right here going through this plate is the winch mounting plate. This is, this is the drive winch that's going to drive this whole assembly back and forth across the rail. It is three eighths of an inch thick, nine and a half inches wide, 13 inches tall. A little three eighths inch thick plate is six inches long. Uh, three and seven eighths of an inch wide. All right, so here's the blocks. They're made out of inch and a half plastic. It's actually a special plastic. I forget the actual naming convention on it. I'll put it up there in the uh, description above. This stuff's really strong. It's like 6,000 PSI is what it's able to take. And it's very slick, very slippery and it's uh, UV resistant. So that's essentially gonna be the guide blocks in between the two plates. The 
these are 5 16 bolts going through from one plate to the other just coarse thread and the fun part is getting them started in the back side of this block You got me joking. You think I, I got them both started already? Alrighty, so there is the chain is on and tightened up with lock nuts top and bottom. You can see how it goes around the sprocket on the hub of the winch. It's redirected up and down. Alright, I just need to put the drive winch in. Same sprocket on this one as I have on the other. The chain stretch from rail to rail on the sawmill and run right up against the bottom of these guide blocks. This sprocket actually runs a little bit high to these blocks, just a little bit to make sure that that chain stays engaged. Alright, I drilled these holes out a little bit to make alignment just a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, that's much, much easier. Relatively simple on the back side where it runs on the rail. See where that sprocket runs up underneath. So you'll see just how wide this is. It ends up being, I believe, about 22 inches, which is uh, not great. From the center of the rail out this way, it's nine inches. And this way, it's uh, just short of 13 inches. So it takes up a good bit of room. It's going to go in the same place where the current log stop is, the little crank one. And so it'll take up that whole area right there. Okay, so this is the bar that the assembly is going to ride on. Essentially, it's just a two inch by four inch uh, rectangle tube. And then you have the little brackets that the chain is going to stretch across on. And essentially, this will, this will be welded to each one of the main frame rails. And just welds right to the bottom. And I'm going to overlap it to where it lasts over about 3 eighths of an inch, the thickness of this uh, plate. So it will give, give me something to set this tubing down on. Because I essentially am going to have the whole assembly made up all together, so it's going to be quite heavy. The thing with a belt, belt is do it once and then do it over. So I cut this chain just a little bit long. I'm going to have to take another link out. Take that clip off. That's essentially a master link. Pin these, pin these two pieces together. So, just spread that open like so. Come back here. Got one side. 
Master link goes on. Bolt link. Cover plate. And the lock plate. Fumble fingers today. There you go. There's actually a pin that goes in the other side here. So, the real advantage to having a power log dog, besides the obvious of not having to walk from the mill all the way up here to undo or to fasten a log dog is it's actually it can be used for several different functions you can use it to help turn a log or actually turn a log itself because you can catch it by this front edge and just push that log up and over and turn a log with it you can use it to assist the log turner when you have a log on here that's of an unusual shape like a big bell end or it has a cross section in it and everything and that gives you control in two different places so you got a log that's heavy on one end say this gives you an advantage to be able to handle those logs. But another thing is, is the cans. A log turner tends to do damage to the side of a cant when you use it to turn it. This will be able to turn a cant without an issue, uh, without damaging it. Because you can get up underneath it on the far side, pull the can over, flip it up without damaging the cant. And of course the same thing if you have several slabs here on the mill that, you, that you've done and you want to edge those slabs, you can get up underneath those, those slabs, push them up, pin them over up against the log stops, and of course cut it. So, yeah, it's, uh, this is far more, this is probably the most versatile piece on this mill as far as being able to help out and function. The old log dog, the mechanical one that was a screw type, was 10 inches from the edge of this tubing. To the front of the dog. This one is nine and a half, so I've gained a little bit, not a lot. Well, you can see everything how it is. It does take up a considerable amount of space in between the bunks, but I positioned it forward, uh, hopefully enough that it shouldn't miss the new uh, log stops that I'm going to put on. But I get you there. I'm gonna. If you'll notice. The current log stop uh, pipe or tubing, I had to position it down so that it would clear. And you can see that there. So everything is as it's supposed to be so that the wire does not get pulled loose. This is 10-2 SO cord. I've got it going through a grommet. And I've got it secured underneath. I had to install some angle iron down the sides to hold the wiring. I just tacked it in place. Not a big deal. And there it is there where the wire going down in it. Going down through, right through the spring clips. And down through back to where I have the solenoids mounted at the back. Just a typical solenoid configuration. The front two solenoids are the ones I wired up. I need to install one of the boots there on the front one. And the back one. But gives you an idea of what I did there. And then of course everything runs out of the control panel control box at the back. So essentially this panel here is up and down, green is up, red is down, green goes to the left or essentially pinches the log, red comes back.
I'll put a list of components at the very top. And other than that, thanks for watching.